Okay. All right, class, we're going to start with a very short video. It's a little elementary, but just bear with me. There's going to be a point to it. So, here we go. Synthesis and particulars into a narrative that will stand the test of critical methods. Now that's a really long and wordy title, but we really want to refer to it as the history of the history. So essentially what historiography is, is how something becomes history. Right? It's not just facts, it's a discussion, it's a study. I mean, there's lots of reasons why certain things stick and other things don't, and that's what historiography does. It looks at those, and then that process goes into writing the paper. Alright, so process of historiography, there's three main sources when we talk about history and research. You guys are going to need to know these when you write your research papers later. The first one is primary sources. Primary sources are original material. Uh, they're from the time period involved and not filtered through interpretation or evaluation. All right, so this is what the bulk of historians are going to work on. This is what I want a lot of your paper to be based on. Uh, some examples, get an idea of what exactly it is. You know, some journals, speeches. Letters that someone from the time period wrote, maybe an interview or two. Photos can be primary examples, I mean primary sources. Even songs can be primary sources because they all lend back to time and period of history. Artifacts too, coins, uh, clothing, fossils, all sorts of different things can contribute to historical work. The next one is secondary sources. Uh, these are accounts written after the fact with benefits of hindsight, their interpretations and evaluations of primary sources. Okay. They're not really evidence, they're a little bit different than your primary sources, but rather it's a commentary on commentary and discussion on the evidence. So these are going to be things like biographies. So they aren't actually examining the straight facts from it. They're taking the facts that they found and they're interpreting them and putting it out. This is what most of you guys have read or are more familiar with as far as secondary sources than primary sources. Other examples include journal articles or monographs. And now, the third one, it's probably one you guys are all most familiar with, is uh, tertiary, tertiary sources. Uh, kind of hard to say, but it's probably the most common. Uh, they consist of information, which is a distillation and collection of primary and secondary sources. It sounds a little bit confusing, but basically what it is are encyclopedias, textbooks, you know, Wikipedia, the websites, most of the stuff you're used to seeing and using. Alright, so now we want, we want to apply these three principles into uh, looking at another person of history. So I think we all know this guy. Alright, warned about the British, rode his horse 345 miles. Anybody, can anybody guess who he is? Paul Revere. No, it is Israel Bisson. Alright, Paul Revere is also famous for it. And another one too, William Dawes. 
actually rode the exact same distance as Paul Revere. It's kind of an interesting fact when you think about it. Paul Revere, if you take a look, started in Boston, went to Lexington, he rode 20 miles all in one night. William Dawes, the exact same thing, actually beat Paul Revere there. Right? Israel Bissell, on the other hand, outdid him by quite a bit. Or all the way from Watertown, all the way to Philadelphia, across state lines, over 345 miles, rode his horse for over five days. And I shouldn't say his horse, I should say his horses, because at one point his horse became so exhausted it died. He got a new horse and continued riding. Now you're thinking, that's going to chafe. That's a lot of horse riding. Right? So, <laughs> but the big question is, why is Paul Revere so famous when he only rode 20 miles? And Israel Bissell of 345, right? Or even, why is it William Dawes even more famous? Before this lesson, had anybody heard of Israel, Israel Bissell or William Dawes? No? All right. Well, the answer is because of this guy, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I'm sure none of you have heard of him either, but he is a famous poet. Was, he wrote a poem about Paul Revere. It was about close to 100 years later, actually. It was during the time of the Civil War. He was an abolitionist, and he wanted to instill patriotism in the North, and kind of get people riled up and ready to go. And they wanted to do this by creating an American hero. So he decided to write the poem, Paul Revere's, the uh, poem, Paul Revere's Ride, which he chose Paul Revere instead of Israel Bissell or William Dawes for the simple fact that Paul Revere rhymed a whole lot better than Bissell and Dawes. Because there's not a whole lot of things that rhyme with Bissell. I thought about it for quite a while, that comes Bissell and Bissell. I don't think anybody else has any other ones that rhyme. No? I'd, I'd be shocked. This a missile that'd be tough to use in the American Revolution. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, here's the poem that got him famous. This is my children, you shall hear the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is known alive. Who remembers that famous day and year? He said to his friends, the British march by land or sea from the town tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch. The North Church Towers has a signal light. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be. Now, it continues and goes on for quite a while, but I don't want to sit here and read for 20 minutes. But essentially, this poem became so popular that Paul Revere's fame legend grew. Now, whether or not he deserves it more than other people or not, it's become history. There's statues everywhere, Paul Revere in Boston, places like that. He's become a huge patriot out of nowhere. Basically, after he died, he wasn't famous at all. He came from basically being a small silversmith to becoming a famous patriot because of this poem. Now, there's also been another poem I found written by Helen F. Moore, who kind of wanted to balance things out and level up the playing field. She talked about William F. Dawes and wrote a short poem for him. So, it is all very well for the children to hear the midnight ride of Paul Revere. But why should my name be quite, quite forgot? Who rode as boldly and well got, got it quite. Uh, why should I ask? The reason is clear. My name was Dawes and his revere. So once again, more people claim the fact that that uh, Paul Revere is famous essentially because his name rhymes better. Now there's all sorts of cases in history, and this is what we want to look at when we talk about historiography. Okay? Because some things about history become history because folklore becomes history. It's just, it's really interesting. So, in conclusion, the big thing I want to do is focus on this. Real history is not a series of facts, but a sketch that is influenced by several other factors. Right? So it's not just a list and series of facts. Right? It's the discussion. And that's where the part of the research goes into, is distinguishing legend from fact. And we write your papers and work on the sources and everything. We're going to be able to distinguish those things. We're going to work on using our sources uh, responsibly. Uh, all right, we're going to finish up a little bit of closure. You guys all have your whiteboards. I'm going to ask you guys to write a small poem, like Henry Wadsworth, Longfellow. Uh, it can be about historiography or one of the things we talked about, but try and get at least two to three stanzas or lines, a little review, try and be creative. Hopefully we can change history. I doubt it. <laughs> but more clearly about it, this is better, I guess. So. All right, take some time and write your poems. Give you guys a couple minutes and then we'll see if anybody wants to share.
For someone who struggles with rhyming, just get some information down. <laughs> or write something interesting that you learn. So know not everyone's the best rhymer. guys wrapping up your poem or information yeah, <laughs> you know, we Is anyone willing to share their poem? Kate. <laughs> yeah, I will. Give me a second. Alright. Please tell me. That's impressive. That's a long one. Alright. Okay. Alright, his name was Israel Bissell. He wrote his, he wrote his horse named Bissell. Through the night, Bissell ran until he was in the of a fame. The British are coming, their guns are not humming. Beware of defeat, or we will worship the day of defeat. I like it. Wow, that was nice. Thanks for coming in. I'll applause for here. Thanks for having me share with us. Anyone else? Okay. I don't think you want to share it, Kate. This one was a man. It works. This one was a man who was probably tan, most known for bathrooms, but sadly no statues. For he too rode a horse, but not a revered, not as a revered horse. Well, I'm not saying 